Hi, you guys. Tinker Cook here. It's a beautiful fall Monday. And, you know, what do we love about fall days? To me, I love the colors and the trees, but the other things that kind of happen around fall time are cattails. And I don't think we've ever done a painting about cattails before. I don't think either in our Academy of Fine Art and Acrylic Painting or on YouTube. I don't remember doing any. Well, maybe one with a boat. Yeah, we have one. There's a boat cattail. But this, we're going to do a close-up of some... Um, I don't know what to call them, swamp flowers, cattails and other flowers. And um, I think it's kind of pretty. It's actually a real place. And uh, we're going to just kind of put our artistic twist on it so we're just not uh, just mindlessly painting the photograph. Not going to do that. No, no, no. So follow along with me. Let's give a shout out to our mods as we explain that we're, this is one of our, per this premiere is happening because John and I are traveling. Where do you think we will be when this airs, John? I'm going for October 3rd and we will be in leaving Barcelona. Well, Barcelona. All right. So uh, how fun is that? So hola, friends. Hola. Uh, buenos dias. That's Spanish for oh. hi. <laughs> Oh, look at you. You're bilingual. Yes. Yeah. Do you know anything else? Well, you know, yeah, I do. For instance, like, um, Come what do you stuff. call, what do you call someone that speaks two languages? Like bilingual, right? And Absolutely. three languages is like trilingual. I right? would think so. And what do you call someone that speaks one language? Um, mono, mono language? An American. There you go. <laughs> and what do you speak, what do you call someone that speaks all the languages? Every language in the world? Uh-huh. May I? An artist. Oh. Ooh. 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 Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right, you guys. That get too heavy. Deep. 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 Oh, Deep. that and family. Let's bring them back. Yeah. Two cool dudes. So, all right. So here's our Tears by Reference photo. And uh, which I think is really pretty. You got these beautiful cattails. We got some hidden in here. These interesting sort of swampy flowers, whatever they are, they're growing along the bank. Very Wouldn't pretty. Would be the cattail flowers? Do cattails have flowers? No, these are something. I never saw these kind of flowers. So wherever these are, this is apparently in um, Colorado. So I don't know what kind of flowers oh. these are, but maybe Jennifer knows Jennifer Chase because she lives in Colorado. She, she can tell us, stuff. those of you, you know. So anyhow, what we're going to do is just as a little 8 by 10 canvas. We're going to make this pretty easy. While I'm showing you how to do it, I just, do you see if we just, I, I my blue is showing kind of about like this down, down to here, right? Kind of about, this is how much of the blue background would be showing. I've started off with the red canvas. So if I do something like this and... Um, maybe come about like that. All right, that's probably um, everything I'm gonna want that's not blue. And then you could have said, gosh, Ginger, why not just start with blue? Well, you could, okay, but we're not gonna because what would be the fun and not tormenting you a little bit with new ideas, yes? Really? So, uh, yeah, so you could start with blue, but we ain't gonna do it. Ooh, so, ain't. Now, did when, you get yelled at for using the word ain't when you were a kid? Oh, yeah. And then I used to say things like, you know, and my, whenever I did that, my mother would just silently in my conversation, go, this was so great, you know? And, and then, you know, like my friend, and, you know, every time I said that, she'd just raise a finger up, <laughs> you know? It's hard to break me of that habit. Now I say yes and yes. I can't, you know, she probably wouldn't like that either. You know? So we have a... A palette that we have used before, but we feel like due to the economy, we're, we're saving a few shekels. We'll show you how to do that. These are called Stay Wet Palettes. We've graduated to those because if you're, it, it, they will uh, keep your um, paint uh, usable months for that. months, for a long time, <laughs> long time. So if, if it's still good. Do it. So we've got the colors. We've got a little buff titanium. Over to the left there. Where here? This? Yeah, yeah. We've got a little buff titanium. We've got some titanium white. We have some burnt sienna. These colors are just like burnt sienna, and that's what happens when you add white to it. We have burnt umber. We have, um, I think we have dosnine purple, and uh, that would be that one. We have yellow oxide or ochre. We have cad yellow light, cad yellow medium. We have magenta, of course. We have cad red medium. I believe your purple is the mauve. We and I think we have a mauve. Yeah, I think yeah, we have we, a mauve there. We did there. that because the dioxin glares. Yeah. I mean, Basically it's, the it's, same color. 
and I think we'll end up, we'll head up with a, we have ultramarine blue. I think I want, I think that's thalo blue right there. Looks like it. And uh, that's kind of it, you guys. Okay. Basic color palette. Basic color palette. And, you know, that's what everybody says. I just wish you'd put the, we try to use the same colors all the time. So you just, you know, get a few of these colors and you got them. And uh, we've got a little cad, cadmium orange, which is one of my new favorite colors. Just like that color. I need to add that to the chart. So, um, uh, here we go. I've got this. So now what I want to do is I want you to keep the brush strokes going this direction. And we're not doing this. No, no, no. I know that that's, we're keeping it calm. We're just doing this. Yes. Keeping everything going sideways. And we're going to say that this part in here is going to be a dark, it's going to be darker and this will be our lightest color up here. And then this color in here will be maybe a different color blue, but it'll all be behind the cattails anyway. So now that you get, we got a plan here. So um, we're gonna start with a larger brush here like this. Um, you know, we always start with a brush like this. Let's be bold and do something else. Ooh, you, you know? crazy gal, you. Yeah, that's the point of owning all this stuff if you don't use it, right? I own so many brushes. Let's, let's, own, let's try a different brush. What do I got? Brushy, brushy on the wall. Who's the fairest of them all? Do you like that? No? Yeah, very good. It's a Nursery good, right? rhymes now. Yeah, so I like this brush. Let's try this one like this. This is just sort of a... Well, oh, that's a round one. Kind of a round brush. It's kind of that's soft. It's a round brush. All right, so... Nothing special about that brush. It's just round. Just round. Don't so uh, just, just because, I, you know, we're going to get a different brush stroke, so now we're going to go... We're going to start with white and a little bit of ultramarine blue and thalo, make kind of a light blue color. And um, this will be our lightest color up here. And we're just going to do this little brush strokes overlapping, not right? Let's make like a little mosaic of color here, like that. We're going to just do, I'm just, now there's a method to my madness. And as I, as I add color, Let's weave it in. When I was a kid, I went to summer camp, and um, one of the things that they had was they had these big, long, long, narrow buildings in on each side of a courtyard, kind of a, I think the courtyard was like a clay cement color, you know, kind of that reddish cement color. And then on one 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 of the long houses had nothing but giant looms the size of a car. They were huge, and they taught weaving. The other one was art, arts and crafts, and then at one end they had one that was wood carving. That's Building, and cool. they taught they taught all these different skills. It was a great camp, Four Winds uh, camp in uh, uh, on Orcas Island, Seattle. Huh? It still goes today. Um, the lady that uh, owned it, I was a probably third generation camper when I was a kid going there. Um, and then later I went back as a counselor. So we're going to take a little bit of this ultramarine blue now and mix a little bit more of this. Come up in here, see how I'm changing the blues? Now what happens when I do this, now this is kind of key here. What happens when I do this is because I'm making these little overlapping brush strokes, if John were to, I don't know if you can zoom in, see the little bit of red that's peeking through? That's mm. intentional. That's absolutely intentional. Um, I'm just see a little bit lighter back in here. Um, it's kind of making artistic-y. Yeah, this is something. Um, we're going for pa painting here, not 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 for just replicating a photograph. You can practically do that these days on the computer. If you just want a photograph, you can just print it out on the computer. So why would you do that? So what you're trying to do is uh, tell us something else about these uh, plants and this uh, this world of water lilies. Let's take a little bit of purple in there, too. Let's put a little bit of purple color in here now. Ooh, look how pretty that is. A little bit of that purple color into the blue. See? See how we're just weaving these colors in. And, and really, that's what you're doing. I really loved weaving. Karen did, did some weaving, didn't she, John? Oh, did yeah. First Absol wife? Absolutely. And there's something, it's not an inexpensive uh, hobby. I remember doing macrame, too, uh, when that was all popular. That was a little cheaper to do. I mean, there's not, you know, what's twine and rope and stuff, right? So that's not that much money. But um, 
I remember doing all that. So again, our moderators are here. Um, whoa, 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 whoa. We're assuming they're here. But if they are here, a big shout out from us for being here. Okay. Now, hopefully we're here. Again, the it, time zone difference may... Uh, yeah, it, we're, we're trying to be here, and if we're not, we're, we're sending our love <laughs> to you guys Just right now. Just like we're there. Yeah, we, we're we're going to try and be there. So let's pick up some questions in case we're not there, and we'll pretend like we're answering them. Do you like that? <laughs> okay. You make up you a question. Red? You make up... Why did I choose the red? Well, that's a great question, John. Why did I choose the red? Years ago, I ran into an artist in um, Hawaii. This was, oh, back in 1990, 91. We're touring around. And um, she had a little art gallery there. And she did a lot of ocean scenes. And her feeling was that water should always be painted over red, and so should trees. And sometimes she would leave the tiniest bit of red outline on the, you know, next, say if you had a tree like this, maybe one side of it would have a tiny bit of a red line showing through it. And her paintings were charming. And that's, her underpaintings were always red, and that was sort of a signature style for her. Interesting, yes? But again, your underpainting, if you're painting like this, your underpainting, ooh, that's interesting. I didn't mean to do that, but let's, let's, yeah. Okay, we'll, we'll leave a little bit of that going here. A little bit of white, ultramarine blue. Ooh, that wasn't, there you go, here you go. Oh, I've got it now, no panic. We're all good. Um, could always dry it too if you didn't like something. So to bring this down like that. And see, honestly, that's a, there's some pretty colors in here. And do you see how beautiful the turquoise overlaps everything else? And 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 you all these blues that we've got going here, yes, all these blues. I'm going to rinse the brush. All these different blues from how many different blues would you use? Just ultimately blue and thalo, and a little there bit of go. purple. See, so here's a little bit of the blue in here too. That's just thalo blue and ultramarine blue It'd come down in here like that. And um, now, if you need to go back and put a little bit of piece of blue, say behind a, oh, you know, like for instance, if after it's painted, you needed to come in here with a little piece of blue, it really wouldn't matter which one you picked, would it? You could do that and it would all kind of work, right? It'd all fit in there. So let's just do something like that. And uh, let's see, I think that's about as far as down as what, I think I want to come down on this side a little bit too. Um, just take a little bit of this purple, light purple color. There we go. Just put some of that color in there too. That's kind of going to weave that in. This is an interesting thing to do, just, just weaving in color. Uh, and then we'll dry it. And um, that'll be our background. And uh, I think you'll be... I imagine from my envisioning of how I'm painting this that you'll be very surprised. Um, I'm already surprised. Are you? I mean, it's pretty, isn't it? And we haven't it done is. much of anything. It's almost like a little ocean scene. What color is that? Oh, that's Payne's Gray. That's why. That's, I don't want that Payne's Gray. Oh, here's gray. another question from one of our viewers. Yeah. I've been watching some of your older videos, and I keep hearing the word pack. What is a pack? Um, packs are personal art coaching, and this is something that's unique to us. A lot of people, particularly the way we charge for it, which is practically free, because they come with your red, purple, or um, uh, blue. blue memberships that are our fine art academy. And what that does is that allows you, we talked about this sometime, you know, I'm telling you what, if Monet were alive, or Cezanne, or Picasso even, it wouldn't really matter. Uh, Michelangelo. I mean, if those guys were alive and available to look at my artwork and make some comments, who wouldn't want that? Well, I'm not saying that I'm Michelangelo or Monet, but when you get a professional artist to look at your artwork with a set of eyes that's not judgmental but helpful, your painting skills, we have discovered, expand like crazy. Expotentially. Expotentially. Now, in the picture, there's a little bit of white in here. I think I'll use just the buff titanium for that. We'll put a few of these little white bits in here. Maybe there some sort of reflection from the clouds. I don't think we need too many, but I'm going to just put a few of those up there like that. 
keep everything kind of level just to make it more interesting yes wow neat, neat background yes and yes oh gosh did you, you amaze yourself sometimes well i thought this up and i thought hey what's well, so i look at the ever do that look at that and say i can't believe i painted that wow that's kind of cool okay so there's a little bit of phthalo blue a little bit of darker blue here there you go a little bit brighter down in here it's going over the red there we go so, all right so let's Dry this. John has great stuff to tell you why I'm drying this. Oh, you're saying that like I do. Well, you will by the time we air this because I've we told hope. you to have something. If we don't, <laughs> we don't. <laughs> right now, not this red hot second, but we have it. You might be looking to tell me uh, what we're releasing that week, too. Well, we can be show people stuff like that. Yeah. yeah the All right, we're frame. drying. Okay. That is what's coming out this week. Yeah, this is a uh, our, our early Christmas release. Um, I wanted to give everybody plenty of time in the Academy to learn to paint this, you know, have a chance to paint it, so that you'd have it up for Christmas. This is uh, our newest uh, Santa. Every year we try to do a Santa. We've got some gorgeous Santas, and this will be released this week. And uh, what is this? This is a 12 by 16, right? Flip it over. Yeah, look at that. Look 12 at by you. 16, 12 by 16. <laughs> and um, I think that this is, a, this is a, um, one of my favorite Santas. And we've done some great ones. And we've got Santa John and everything. But I love this one. And I love, if you if you look at the detail on this, you've got even the packages have all kinds of pr kind of interesting print on them. Really pretty. Um, so anyway, if Academy of Fine Art and Acrylic Painting, give yourself an early Christmas gift if you haven't joined as Academy members a membership and take advantage of these fabulous tutorials, step-by-step -step tutorials that are available to you with full traceables and everything. Okay. And what's that, what's that website? Acrylic Painting with GingerCook.com. There you go. All right. All so right. We have dried that. No, yeah. we dried the other one. That one's been dry. Oh, that's right. This is what we've dried. Well, it's coming back to me. It's just, you know, okay, you guys. <laughs> All right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to put in the cattails. And um, now we have the chalkboard out just to make sure. Now we've got the general shape of a cattail. Uh, you know, the, not, not the, 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 the cattail itself, you know, it's kind of like a hot dog. But it oh, tapers yes. down a little bit like that. Kind of tapers where a hot dog wouldn't, and that tapers down, and then it has a, a you know, stem. We're not going to see a lot of the stems, okay? And there's going to be a light side to the um, this and a dark side, and then the um, the reeds. They're going. And I think you want to have think the reeds, kind of tapering like this, uh, maybe more like that, like that. Feeling. See how the. There, can you see how they kind of overlapping each other and they're swooping up? And the reason, and how you're going to separate one from another, it's going to be lights and darks, all right? So we're going to start with our darkest green first. And we want to cover, we want to come up from this area, kind of up this way. And if you need to put a few guidelines, not drawing them out, just a few lines that you know. And I, I'm going to want one up this way. For sure, I want one here, and I'm going to have my um, cattail. The star of the show? Which is, uh, see, I put my paper here. I'm going to say my cattail is, see, I was right, too, wasn't it? Right here. Here's where my cattail goes, right about here. It doesn't come down that far. There it is. And then the rest is reeds, and then we have some flowers and so forth. So uh, we'll start with the dark green. This is where we are going to want the angle brush. Um, that was fun to use the round one. Now, I want a really dark green, so I can make it with ultramarine blue and cadjol medium. Ultramarine blue, cadjol medium, and a tiny bit of cad red. Just a bit of cad red. Now I've got a pretty nice green here. And I'm going to come on back here like this with an angle brush and just lift up as I paint them. See, you can kind of just you need them a little thicker. 
and say maybe make some this way. So take advantage of these angle brushes because as you, it's like you run along and then you lift it up, you see? So then you're just painting with the heel like an airplane taking off. So just come along here like this, thick and thin lines. Be sure to do that, go all the way off the canvas. I want some of this a little darker. I'm gonna add a little phthalo blue to that and a tiny bit of cad red. I'm not sure I've got these dark enough. Um, I know I've got some dark stuff down in here like this, coming up this way, and a little bit fatter. And I know I've got something coming up like this. And then you want some that are very thin. Just use the toe of the brush. If you're not getting a good thin line like that, your brush is not, um, it's, it's got to come to a point or none of this works. I, I, I'm sad to tell you that, but if you've got to be able to have it come to a, you know, you've got to be able to get a pretty thin line, practice on something first, right? So th that's pretty good right there. And now I'm going to take some a little bit of zinc white, which is going to lighten that up some, like that. And I'm going to put some of these blue ones back here, kind of overlap a couple. Maybe put a little bit of the buff titanium. Okay. And uh, let's take a, let's take some cad yellow light and add that color. And now we're going to, maybe we're going to say that there's some coming up. I'm trying to see what I can do without drawing like that. Let's put a little bit of buff titanium with that, a little bit of cad yellow medium, make a lighter blue green. They don't all have to be the same color. You just want to keep the dark ones in here too. Okay. And this works pretty good because it's still dark. Yes and yes. So that's what I've got so far with those cattails. We're going to add some more, but uh, not at this red hot second. So I know I want something pretty lighter. I want a lighter gold color. So right up in this area, I want some lighter uh, of these tails right there like that. Uh, maybe I'll go over a couple of these here with that color and a little white. Because a couple of these I want lighter while I still can paint them. Maybe I'll put a little orange with a couple. There we go. Just, it's fast, right? And here's some yellow and orange and let's go. Okay, come up this way. I know that's pretty interesting, isn't it? I mean, what you can do with just a, just the tiniest bit of, of color, a little bit of orange or a couple of these. This is going to come up, up to a stem and a flower up here. There's some flowers up here, a little bit of orange color going this way. Yes. Something coming in like that, okay? So, this is where we dry. We, we got away with a lot, but we got to dry something. Yes? All right, so let's take a moment and dry that. It's looking pretty good so far. Yeah, it's kind of nice, huh? I kind of like that red background. Yeah. Are we ready to go? Yeah, we've been ready. Well, I thought you were going to say how many times. Oh, that's time. right. Sorry. Do you want to do that now or just clap nah, it or something? We'll do it next time. <laughs> All right. So I've got a little bit of, of of the purple and brown. And I'm going to say there's a, I'm going to put a little cattail here. Coming up here like that. And maybe I'm going to say there's one up here like this in here. 
I'm just going to hide a few cattails. Just the purple and the burnt sienna. I want to come up here like that. Now that we've established the shape. Yeah. And let's see, I'm out of orange, pretty orange color. Get a little bit of that out again. And that's that cadmium orange. That's, I've really been using a lot of that recently in my artwork, and I like it a lot. Let's just go back to our purple. Turn this sideways. I want to make sure that we have this as a big enough cattail. Okay. I mean, you want to make sure that you've actually got a cattail sitting here. Here's one here, too, kind of sitting up here like that. Yeah. Okay. Now I'm going to wipe the brush off, and uh, that has to just dry before I can do much with it. But I think we said we dried some of this. Now we've got a little bit of orange and yellow oxide. I think we can put a few of these fronds coming that way. Yeah, that's pretty. And let's put a little bit of orange back. Kind of, let's just suggest there might be something back here on these. Yeah. And here on this, let's just do that. That's a nice fluffy cattail. We had these in California in our pond. And I was so excited when the first one sh showed up because I didn't plan them. They just came, right? And then the one since then it was, I think, in second grade or second, first or second grade. Um, she had a little girlfriend come by the house to play and it was in, lived in the neighborhood. And um, her friend, um, I'm going to see if I still have Jenna took picked my cattails and I was so upset not understanding that these are just like like tribbles. Once you get one, you get a million of them, right? <laughs> and just <laughs> and then they they fluttered the because the, they're inside. They're all like soft cotton, and they fly all over when you when you you've never seen one, and they they're all soft and squishy, like they're made out of felt. And then when you when you kind of take them apart. Those are seeds, and they the wind picks up, and that's a zillion cattails that just flew everywhere. So there, so, I mean that's a that was a. I promise you, dear friend, that was a challenge. I got that little light here. Just wanted to suggest some light on this. I'd have them so dark. Let's say there's another little red cattail right here. That, you know, you may or may not see them, but we'll just, they were in the picture, so I'm putting them in, right? A little bit of cattail. So, so you got, that's kind of a nice painting. We haven't even done the flowers, right? So no no worries. We'll get to, we'll get to the flowers. Now I'm looking for some tall reeds coming up like this one. So that's got to be our bright green. Okay, so we want a nice dark dark green. That's got to be something coming up here like that now. So we've changed green colors on you. I want some more yellow here. Okay, so um, I need to dry that before we put the flowers. Well, let's put the flowers in, and that will be in good. We'll be in good shape. Um, let's see. Let's get that a little darker. Yeah. Okay. Great fun. Yes. All right, so I'm going to dry this. I'll be right back. Okay, so what we're going to do next are the flowers. And I'm going to use a smaller brush for that. The clean one doesn't have any color on it. All right. And we're going to start with the white paint 
maybe some uh, buff titanium since I've got a lot of it, and magenta, and yellow. And nice peaky orange. Kind of a peachy color, right? And I know that, for instance, I've got this sort of, if you think about this, I want you, want you guys to see this. You see it's a half circle like that. Do you see that, the shape? See that? Kind of like a brain. Yeah, so we're going to say it goes right about there, okay? Okay, and then I've got another one kind of coming up here and uh, kind of overlapping here like that. I don't want to lose my... Well, we'll move it. We'll, we'll play where these go. All right, so we'll put the first one in. And we're going to start by um, kind of rolling the extra paint off the brush and using just the tip. We're going to just do a dot like this. I'm going to drop this paint on there like this, this peach color, and like little dots. Okay. Getting a little bit of paint. This is where you want a little bit of paint so that it kind of is going to plop on there. It's going to get a little bit more peach going on here. Well, maybe orange and, and yellow. Just a little bit more peach color on here. A little bit more cad red in it. Let's put so I need it a little bit darker. Let's try a little red. Let's just do, well, so let's just go over cad red and orange now because I'm not getting the color I want. I think I'll rinse my brush because I'm not getting the color I want and do red and there you go because I want this side to be uh, this is cad red medium well, I guess that's napla crimson it's not even cad red all right so I'm going to do this side is going to be kind of that still that color right because we got to put the highlights on top right and we don't have enough white to really do an effective painting. We're out of white. And um, uh, now we aren't. So I just, because if I want to do a magenta, if I want to do a peach color, it's really, here's the thing. We're just, we've got too many colors in there now. I need a peach color, and it's got to have some yellow with no green in it. All right, so there you go. Peach and a little bit of this orange. There we go. There we go. Ah, that's it. Now, let's say there's a little one of these over here, which I will just plop on, not as carefully, okay? And then up here, there's gonna be a peach one and I'm going to go ahead and white and magenta it's a little pinker I'm going to go ahead and just plop on a little flower here like that and then above it I'm going to say there's another one now, now watch the shapes because there's about three little of these little kind of umbrella shaped tops to this this is, these are two smaller ones. This is the bigger one, okay? We're going to say there's something behind here, too, as long as we're doing umbrella-shaped tops. I'm going to say that there's one here. And then we've got a couple down in here, smaller ones. And again, you want to make sure there's not water on your brush. It's paint. And then if you have to, uh, I generally like some of the darker colors in my flowers underneath. So we'll put a few of these on here like that. Vary the size. This is very important. Don't make them all the same size. If you have to use a pointy brush instead of one of these angles, if your angle brush is not, um, is not sharp enough, um, you know, it doesn't come to a point if it's too dull, then use a different brush. We know we want some dark in it. Just a little bit of dark contrast. Usually the bottom of the flowers have a bit of that, like that. Okay. And uh, we're gonna, we're gonna have to dry them a little bit. Now, that's those flowers, but maybe we can just um, we haven't finished them, but we can now we've got two different color flowers. Now we've got the 
the beige ones, which are sort of um, kind of buff titanium and 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 burnt sienna. And we're going to say up in here like this, I'm going to tap on these little beige flowers and clump them together. Let's take a little titanium white with that because they're a uh, little yellow oxide. I'll get the color I want, like Goldilocks. All right, so a little yellow oxide. Again, these are the, your, kind of your underpainting colors. They're, they're going to have white on top. And you just don't want to overmix the colors either. You just want to say that here's some of these growing up here like that. And you've got some here at the bottom that are in here playing a little bit. Okay. And um, let's see, what about these? Yeah, let's just do these a little better. These flowers are different, completely different than, you can see that, see there? They're completely different than those, in case someone thought you were painting the same flower. We aren't. So uh, while I'm painting these little flowers in, John, right before I dry it, is there anything you, um, is there any questions you'd like that you see that might have, have come in if we'd been there in person? Got any more questions? Uh, let me give it some thought. Okay. I think I want to make this flower larger uh, now that I'm seeing my composition to the full. So we're going to just expand on this flower that even more. And the same with these. Let's get these just a bit bigger. And there's a dark red flower behind it that kind of was in here too. And I think we'll make that. So it's just sort of dark. It may have bloomed already or whatever in the shadow. It's a dark red there. And um want a little bit of this orange color. Something on my cattails down in here. Let's just brighten up this cattail. Not that color. I want kind of an orange, orange color on my cattail. That is too much paint. We needed a lot of paint on the flower, but we didn't on the cattail. So now watch what happens. We're going to take that one off. And that's really too bright. So, but you know what? That's the, that's what paint's for. You just you get something that's not quite right. You just dry it. You could always dry it. They just, just wanted that cattail to show up a little bit more. Maybe this one too. Okay. You never know, right? You're going to need to lighten or brighten something. I think that we'll get some other leaves going up here. But I want to make sure that we have enough of these little flowers here. Just not too much paint. I've got a lot just sitting on here like this. And this is just white now. Coming back with titanium white. Oh, let's do a tiny brush because that's too big. Getting gloppy. So, you ready? Straight down, drop the, drop the paint. Put it on the tip. Straight down, drop it on the top. Drop it on the top. Wipe it off because you're like you're mopping a floor. You're picking up some of that other color underneath because I didn't dry it. Straight down. Straight down. Get the highlights on these little flowers so they show up. Oh, what a difference. Yes, contrast. Got, can't say enough about contrast. You could have the most beautiful cattail, but if the uh, the water is too dark around it, it's not going to show up very well. Yes? So think about that, too. It's just when you're painting these things in, think about that. I don't know what this is, but I just invented a new flower, I think. It's kind of a green. I, I kind of like that, don't you? I just invented something new here.
All right. So now th let's, let me just take a minute and dry these flowers so I can put the highlights on those. And then we'll just finish the, um, what we're going to do, it's just amazing, is that we're going to go ahead and finish this painting in the next five minutes. Ooh. Boy, that so, painting did change. Yeah. Now, <laughs> the same techniques, a lot of the techniques I used in the cattail painting we're doing tonight was used in this large uh, uh, 20 by 24 uh, gallery wrap canvas of these two tigers drinking, originally done by one of the old EGs, mid-1800s. But this is in the academy. This was our um, our, our featured weekly lesson. And I think that, uh, you know, generally speaking, I try not to do too too many. I know the Santa Claus and both of these are pretty complicated. But if you, what you're learning tonight will help you with this one. And I hope that, again, think about joining the academy. Learn expand your artistic skills this is such a good thing you guys i love this painting gallery wraps why would you want a gallery wrap people always ask that was well, you pay more for them but the thing is that you don't frame them you, you do the painting around the sides and particularly for those of you who are trying to you know get your hobby to pay back a little bit maybe sell some artwork gallery wrapped are good for the um for the buyer because they can opt to frame them or not but they don't have to but if you do a painting that has to be framed and then you maybe you sell it with a frame, if the frame gets chipped or something, then they want a discount and it gives them, or they would have bought it, but they hated your frame or, you know, all this stuff. So the, I, back when uh, I was exclusively, not teaching, but exclusively selling to art agents and galleries, I, only gallery wrap was all I ever did because that, that was the best way for sales. You know, more people were able to respond to that. Basically pre-framed. And the galleries liked it because um, it's a very expensive to frame a gallery wrap painting with special moldings and stuff. So someone did want a frame. They made a lot of money extra on the frame. I mean, and I had cases, John, where some people spent, and they might have spent, say, 4000 on one of the paintings and paid that much for a frame. And we're happy to do it. I, 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 but I don't get people to spend that on shoes and so frames frames I kind of understood but I really didn't understand that either but just saying right there's frames and there's frames and here's a tip about frames um, a decorator once made a very valid point that if you're um, if you just go through your house and take all your photo frames and your little frames of your stuff and maybe just go to Hobby Lobby and change them all out modernize them frames date like close all right so here's our here's our round brush and I, again i just thought we had some white paint out but we used it up okay uh, so let me just do some more white paint um, titanium white if you don't have a big tube of this you, you know that's that's where you really want it all right so remember we just this is some white. We're going to do a few more. Let's see how much brighter this is. We won't do all of them like this. See, because they're drying. Now we're going to come up here. Now this was, when I was observing this um, this flower, It they came up in rows. It was, of course, it's light on top like this, and you want to let those other colors show underneath. But um, and I'll put a little bit of the unbleached titanium with that too. So it's they're kind of in rows, like kind of like almost like little triangles like that. Look at the reference photo really close, and you'll see the rows of what I'm talking about. Okay, and the same thing here, just little tiny. How to hold that brush straight up and down, so you're just getting the top. Okay, the same thing here. That this one is not going to be as bright, so we're going to use unbleached titanium for this one. For the top lighter stuff. It's still bright, but not as bright as the white. If you go to a, the say the hardware store to buy house paint or your paint store to paint paint a wall in your house, you'll notice that they have several different shades of white. You know, let me just do a couple of whites up in here. 
uh, that, you know, hundreds, really, it's hundreds, don't they? This the white, white is always put on the ceiling. And then you have... Um, gobs of whites. Yeah, they have gobs of whites. Eggshell, white. so, antique, a blue tone, a warm tone, any kind of way you want, they got you covered. Yeah, see, they've got you covered, they got you covered, right? Here's some just sort of light pink with white in it. Over here, so no toxin. Here's a little bit of orange. Let's put a little orange in some of these. I can hear like that. Let's put some reds back in this one. Okay, back here, a little bit of gold. Okay, so we've got. Um, Oh, let's see, we want some darker reds in here, kind of at the bottom, so you can kind of see that, like that. So that's that's kind of cool, right? And again, it's a it's the brush stroke is um uh straight up and it's it's straight up and down, and uh, not not at an angle. So you want to make sure that you're doing that. And then what I want to do is I actually want to put some stems on these flowers. I'm going to take some orange. And yellow oxide and try to flatten that out. And I'm going to say that there's a stem on this flower. Let's take some white with that. And I want to do that to these up here too. All right, and a little bit more yellow on that. And uh, kind of brighten it up where I want people to look. Okay. Remember, if you fold it and then widen it out, you get to do stuff like that. And let's bring a few little bits of brighter. Let's just have something coming this way. And this way, I so a little orange, a little bit of the blue color, and just sneak it in if you need to. If you need to, like for instance, right by this um, cattail, it's kind of dark, but what if I lighten it up a bit? I could do that, right? Um, you've got some options here. Um, as far as what's light and what isn't, like I say, you can go back in and highlight a few things just by using this angle brush. Um, don't get too carried away. But now I see where I want to bring some of these white flowers around up into here. I want to curve those up. So um, remember how we did it the first time. If I just kind of these start with these golds. I want to come up here like this and tap this up this way. And then I will have to do a little brown with that. That would be the burnt sienna color. All right, I'm going to just bring that up there. Then as long as I'm doing that, I want something a little bit lighter here. So you can just come back and turn on a few lights. It doesn't hurt you to think about where the lights are going. Yeah. Now, um, can I still make those um, colors? It's still wet. So if I come straight down with the white paint, how will that work? Because remember, when you come straight down, you got to wipe your brush off each time because you're picking up the color underneath, so you're changing it each time you do it. So I'm just suggesting, almost like popcorn. They look like popcorn flowers to me, John. Yeah, they really do. This, that's what you're painting here is like popcorn flowers. Cattails and popcorn flowers. They must really have a name of what they are. Well, you know, and the thing is that we have such a wide audience, and I'm sure they're going to tell us, and all everyone will then know, or Judy will look it up, or Liz or somebody will look it up. But anyway, there's the... 
see how see how we needed to bring those up a little bit and uh, um, let's take some of this cad yellow light yeah again I don't want to lose all my darks I'll put a few back. So this is the thing. Sometimes I've got some of you, you know, have told me that you have a really hard time getting a dark line. And remember, the thing is, it's either lighter. Something is either lighter or darker than something else. So if it's not showing up, you've got to either um, um, lighten it up or darken up, darken what's next to it or lighten what's next to it. Those would be all options. Yeah, and uh, let's see, let's just get a top of just some of that bright orange color, just a couple places in this flower. There's on our cattails. And um, I think we've got a pretty neat painting of cattails. Um, if you look at the, the um, reference photo, uh, it's a little bit wa more washed out up here, but I kind of like the the blue color up here. Might, if I were doing it again, what would I do differently? I might, um, uh, when I was doing the, the sky, I might have lightened this up up here a little bit more, you know, with some stuff. But uh, I, I don't know that there's any benefit in going back. If you were to start again, like, for instance, right here next to this, Cattail, could you make it a little lighter? Any, I don't huh? think you need any lighter at the top there. Huh? I don't think it add anything to have light at the top. You don't think it added anything? No. So just put Maybe the blue back. Focus is down with the flowers. Yeah. So there you go. So there, I think that's sort of a fun painting. And let's see, did we put a little frame with this, John, somewhere? Did you give me an eight by ten frame? Let me get you one. Okay. I'll dry that while you get me one. Okay. Okay. Looking good. Let's throw a frame on it. All right. So here's the... That's a little blue-green, I think, for it, don't you? I was thinking it would be. It's just, that's a little bit too powerful. A frame. Uh, I had a guy... I, I, I met this decorator for Neiman Marcus, which is the most expensive department store in Houston. That's kind of neat, isn't it? This old wood one. Yeah, like that. That's one. kind of pretty because you get the contrast. And he always said that when you were picking a wall color for to hang your artwork on, he said, pick a color you use all the time in your paintings, a consistent color that's always in everything. And for me it was out at the time it was Azo Gold. And he says, paint the wall that color and your paintings will all go beautifully on it. And when you're picking out frames, one of the things they tell you to do is to you know, find a color that's in the painting. This not quite this green in the painting. Let's see. Let's try the blue one. That's what I was originally thinking. Yeah. Huh? See, there's a little bit of that blue color in the painting. Yeah. Now, what that looks like to me is like you're looking through a window out, out, maybe a little people in your house. And I, <clears throat> I think this would be this is a charming painting. It'd be great for even though it has a, the fall feel with the cattails. I think you could leave this up year round. Oh, absolutely. And, and and feel like you had a really, really nice painting. And here's what, you guys, this is very doable. The thing is, is you've got to have those sharp edge Bristol on brushes to do this, the angle. If you're trying to do it with other brushes, you're going to find yourself frustrated. I think the round brush to do the background, overlapping the blues as you go. <laughs> try to, you know, watch this video a couple of times, see how I did it. I think you'll be surprised how many of you will have great success of painting this. And we hope that um, you will uh, leave a comment in the chat and uh, t t t tell us uh, what you're painting this fall and, uh, you know, how you felt about this one. And um, we look super forward to sharing videos uh, and uh, pictures of our trip. And so we hope you're watching our YouTube. You know, you're subscribed to our YouTube gazettes because we will. Our intention is, even though we haven't left Texas yet, so we're technically not in Spain, <laughs> but we will be in Spain when this airs. 
we have just, high hopes. We're just saying, yeah, we think so. Anyway, we're just saying that uh, the YouTube Gazette is going to be <laughs> where you want to be in the know, so to speak, in the know. In the so know. you want to find just we're going to take you with us on this trip and um, uh, and we'll do it mostly through Facebook, uh, Acrylic Painting with Ginger Cook on Facebook and um uh, acrylic painting with gingercook.com. I think it's says ginger cook acrylic painting club on Facebook and acrylic painting with gingercook.com <laughs> on our website. So a lot of ginger cook way too to much. remember, way to remember, but, um, have fun with this and we, we will surprise you again with something fabulous next week. We'll see you then. Be sure to subscribe and give it a thumbs up as you exit the door. Yes. And yes. Thanks everyone. Bye. Bye. Ginger Cook, the queen of color, with a blazing brush at the speed of light, and a blank canvas, and a hearty yes and yes. The queen of color, Ginger Cook, and her sidekick, John Little, teach you to paint with acrylics.